Hey friends, I won second place at the 2021 IOIO, and that is the International Origami Internet Olympiad, which is kind of like the Origami Olympics. And this time around, it was kind of planned around it. So as I explained, you can kind of think about it like the Olympics, but yes, silver. That's crazy to me. I, I was aiming for top 10, but we ended up getting second place. So that is kind of a dream come true for me. And I would like to share my approach on this competition and some of the techniques and strategies I use to get that second place. So this is basically an origami review, but of my folds, which is pretty exciting. And I know normally I have a tendency to like roast my own folds really hard, but this time around, I'm going to try to, you know, not do that so much and really talk about one of some of the great things I used. Uh, as well as some of the mistakes, but I think some of the strategies that led to the success of my models resulting in second place will be useful for you if you would like to try IOIO yourself. So yeah, welcome to the video. This is how to win IOIO. Now, for those who aren't familiar with IOIO, let me explain a little bit on how it works. And we can kind of see how it works based on the judging score here. So this is the top 10. Um, which are kind of the winners, as well as one, two, and three being gold, silver, and bronze winners. And you can see that we have point totals. Those point totals come from the 11 different tasks that we are assigned in round two. Now, round two is the important one. That's what's judged. Round one is kind of like a preliminary round to see who wants to participate. So I believe there were like 800 people for round one that got into round two, but a lot less of them actually finished all the challenges. So normally um, it's pretty tedious and not everyone finishes, but the ones that finish, you know, they kind of stack up to see who got the highest scores for each individual task. Now, between the 11 different tasks, there are different models and different forms of origami. So I'll do a quick scroll through here. Um, one of the tasks are to design your own model. Um, there's one corrugation related model. These are gonna be the tessellations. And then there's crease patterns as well as modulars. And then your run of the mill like representational origami. And so this competition really covers, you know, those three huge, you know, origami paradigms, I would say. Um, so to compete, you need to be practiced in all of those kind of forms. So that's what makes this competition really unique as a folding competition, um, because a lot of people are really great at representational origami. A lot of people are great at just tessellations like this, um, but this is kind of who is most well-rounded or if you want to place well, you have to make yourself well-rounded. You gotta teach yourself some of those new skills that you normally don't do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it goes. And each task is worth different points. So in this case, for example, this squid, uh, I think was worth around 10 points. Um, however, the modular, which was a really crazy modular, was worth 20 points. And, you know, it goes as low as I think the crease pattern one was only worth five points, um, things like that. So, you know, they're scaled based on kind of the difficulty or time taken. And that actually plays into some of the strategy for this competition that I'll explain later. But yeah, you can think of each task kind of like an Olympic event. So what you're looking at here are the top placements for each task. So for example, if we go to the original design, you can see that my buddy Travis Nolan, shout out to Travis, got first place for the own design category. I got second place. And... The own design, I think, was worth 15 points. Because Travis got the gold medal for his own design, he gets an extra like 30% added to his score. So instead of 15 points, it would be, I don't know the math, maybe like 18 points, something like that. As silver, I get plus 20%. And then um, the bronze would get plus 10% extra to their score. Um, and so you know, getting the medals in individual events does contribute a lot to your final score. And I think that talking about the medals for the individual events kind of ties into the theme I'll get 
you know I'll be sticking towards and talking about a lot um, in these series of videos. That's right, series of videos. I can't cover all 11 models in one video, so we're gonna split them up by category um, so that I can dive deep into the, my strategies. But my placement personally, while I was second place, my scoring for the individual tasks was I got four silver medals in the individual tasks as well as one bronze medal. And those five medals together, you know, gave me some extra points. Uh, but, you know, I think it was the most medals by any individual. Um, so the next would be like some people won four medals, some people won three. I had five. It was the most in total number. It wasn't worth the most, of course, but it was the most total. And my goal for folding was to create masterpieces for every single task. And again, that was the goal. But as you can see, I did not create a single masterpiece. You know, I, I, only, I got four second places, but none of them were first place. And I think that is still a great success towards my goal. It was, you know, about 80% of my goal, right? I didn't reach that top mark, but even just reaching um, almost that goal allowed me to play second, which is way higher than my intention of trying to fit into the top 10. Um, and so that kind of mindset towards everything really made me try extremely hard at every single task. Um, and even if I didn't, you know, technically succeed because I pushed myself with this mentality, it allowed me to really score high, um, and do well in this competition. So yeah, that's kind of what the concept is. Um, you know, a, a masterpiece is kind of subjective in origami and, you know, although as much as I can try, I am not quite at that level, but they're still pretty, um, pretty sweet. So that's kind of what I'll talk about. How did I attempt to make masterpieces of every single task? And I hope that you guys can learn something either just in terms of folding techniques or, you know, thought process or skill or for strategy if you'd like to try IOIO IO yourself or to improve your personal score in IOIO. So I hope you guys really enjoy um, these series of videos and this specific one you're watching will be on the representational origami category. And I, you know, I, I have this on display, this tessellation here, but we're gonna talk about these in a future video and then the you know, specific design, which is the pirate over here, this will probably get its own video or uh, it'll be combined with another one. But yeah, this video will tackle the representational origami. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's dive into it. All right. And before we start talking about this links right here, this is actually a great time to just let me thank the IOIO organizers and all the designers, diagrammers, judges who put so much effort into this competition um, because a lot of the judges are really, really experienced folders. It makes this competition very unique to have really good judging. So yeah, I appreciate that a lot. And we are going to talk about this Lynx. And so this Lynx is actually one of my silver medals for individual tasks. It's only worth about five points. So on the lower end, however, that silver would give me, I think around seven. Um, and if you looked at those score charts, just, um, I believe the difference between second and third was less than a point, And the difference between second and first was about four points. So all points matter, even the ones with smaller amounts. Now, this was a really fun design and it was actually a crease pattern challenge. Now this crease pattern was very interesting because it is box plate, as you might be able to tell. However, it is an unaxial box plate design. Uh, this is designed by Angelina Patsevic. Um, and yeah, it's very unique, especially to have an unaxial design, which would prove, I think, pretty challenging to many of the contestants who are not as experienced in collapsing crease patterns. Um, you guys know from my channel, you know I'm very experienced in collapsing crease patterns, including unaxial design. Uh, I have the crease pattern class, right? but also just learning from the plant psychologist who's done quite a lot on unaxial designs, I could apply some extra techniques um, to this. And one of the most notable would be to remove folding through the grid 
on most of the exposed um, features. So you can kind of see here, for the most part, the edges are clean, right? Or not the edges, the surfaces are clean. There's no grid running through um, because this model is based on a grid. If you were to fold a normal box pleat model normally, you would start with a grid. However, this one does not have a grid. Now I did test this with a different paper. I actually tested it with uh, Nicholas Terry's tissue foil beforehand to understand the collapse before going to a final version, which is, this is Canson's Miton paper. And because I test folded it, I knew which surfaces and where on the crease pattern I would need grids or where to fold through for different shaping. And yeah, I think the result stands for itself from the overall clean looking model, as well as because I did this, I think I was actually the only contestant who folded and collapsed this model without the grid. Uh, you might notice from the first um, and third places that um, some of the models, they the paper kind of hides the creases, but you'll still be able to see some of the grid lines. But with this one, no grid lines, the thick paper actually helps with a natural 3D shape of it, right? It, I didn't really have to do a whole lot to get it into this proportioned form of a lynx. Um, and the paper overall, if you've never used Mitton, so it's really good for wet folding or just uh, folding some small curves um, because it holds its shape like that, being a thick paper. And that really elevated this fold here. And so this was one of my, uh, this was really, really fun to do um, and to find that kind of challenge of how do I get a nice folding sequence that can be done without the grid. Um, it's very different than what, there's a diagram that's kind of like a solving sequence for the crease pattern, but not really. Um, it's more for like the uh, details after you get the base. Um, and you can tell from here, since it's unaxial, there are some weird units here that aren't quite the same as say like an insect or a box plate human. Uh, but yeah, this was really fun to do. I think, um, adding that extra effort is really what set the difference here. And you'll notice continuing on, I kind of had a goal of how can I elevate these? How can I take these to the next level, um, or change them up a bit? You know, this it's it's a pretty static design. Um, the main modification besides the uh, removing of the grid is just this strut or this trot, um, a strut. I don't know. Well, it's walking. <laughs> Lynx is walking, and I think that that adds just a little bit extra uh, from the base design, which is you can see um, over here uh, from the diagrams on what it should look like. And yeah, I was complimented pretty heavily for this fold. And I think people will be surprised with how large this actually is um, compared you know, to my hands. Um, but those things all really helped in doing this model very well. And I scored very high. So yeah, this is the first representational fold I will show. And we'll go into some of the ones that are worth more points. Um, yeah, let's check out the next one. Now, this is actually worth the same amount of points as the links, but it is the first of the diagram, the fully diagrammed series. Um, and normally this is probably what people started with since it's task number one. Um, this is actually the test fold and I'm showing the test fold first because I know a lot of people probably folded it around this size or maybe a little bit larger. Um, since it was definitely an easier model to fold and pretty quick to fold, um, you know, it, people might assume it doesn't require too much either nicer paper or any of the sorts, but let me show you what mine looks like, my final fold and how big it was. And so I'll bring it over here and boom, it is quite large actually. This is even larger than the links. Um, it, it maybe will barely fit on screen, but this is Quite a nice paper. And actually, I didn't meddle with this, but I scored almost a perfect score um, out of the five points. And I think that is kind of due to the paper choice. And that is what I want to talk about here. So this specific one, um, 
you know, there wasn't too much I applied to it. Since this is lower amount of points, I didn't want to sink a whole bunch of time into it. Um, while the same could be said strategically about the links, I just had so much fun with the links that I gave it um, a bit of a special treatment and um, that one paid off. But this one I didn't spend as much time with. I was more reliant on clean folds and paper choice to score high. Now, again, I have a test fold. That's also important here. Um, I guess maybe kind of, you know, trying to have a competitive mindset. I wanted to put effort in. You'll notice that I have folded every single task about two or three times to test fold. Um, and because I'm test folding, I get to understand more about the design, where layers get thick, what parts are harder to be clean, what steps I can skip in the diagram to make it look cleaner, all those sorts of details I can figure out from test folding. So that is a key, key point to part of my success. It's just that raw time, the, the grind of you know, folding these out. And Kami is a perfect test fold, uh, but obviously you don't always want to use Kami for a final fold. Now this paper was given to me by uh, my origami uncle, RC. And he gave this to me actually at the Peacock 2019 convention, which was one of the last in-person conventions uh, in the United States. Um, and he gave it to me because he didn't really know what to do with it. It was this really large, I think three by three foot, which is around like 91 centimeter paper that was both really thick, but shiny. And as I was choosing paper for this Elasmosaurus, my main thought was it needs stark color change. Um, that wasn't Kami. So this actually really stood out to me as the perfect choice because it's got a unique texture that will look good on camera, which you can kind of see here, as well as a really stark color change with the white. Um, it's a machine paper and it is super, super thick. It's heavy and everything like, just holding it like this, I can really feel um, like a weight to this paper. Um, and because it's so large, the thickness is actually totally fine for folding it um, and really gives some heavy structure um, to this model. So this, this is a really cool one. It's gonna look really amazing on display and it worked well for the competition. But yeah, it is a pretty huge uh, fold. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's a very unique paper, and I like to say paper choice is more on how and why you use the paper versus what paper you actually use. Um, again, thick paper, especially for a competition where shaping is very important, is not always you know considered. Um, it takes a different skill set to identify the um, benefits of using a thicker paper over a thinner paper. Um, as well as some folding techniques to make sure your layers aren't all exploding or popping out or anything like that. But yeah, that is the Elasmosaurus. And this one is designed by Alejandro Pascual Marquez. Quite a fun fold, you know, not too long to fold, but a kind of a fun color change for the eye. And I think this one turned out pretty well. All right, the next task is task two that we're gonna talk about. And this is the moose designed by Andre Ermakov. Um, big shout out to Andre. He is the host of the IOIO and creator, uh, as well as contributing quite a few designs and diagrams. So yeah, thank you, Andre Ermakov. Um, guys, go check out his work. If you know him already, which you probably do, you know, he has some pretty unique models. Now, Andre's designs are pretty interesting. You can tell that the diagrammed um, where is it? Right here. This diagram photo and my folds kind of look a little different, specifically in the antlers. Um, and as, I guess, the game master, the host, um, I think Andre used a lot of his designs as very strategic points in the competition to differentiate some folding skill. So, for example, what I mean. The moose design, basically where the diagrams lead the shaping up to, makes it look a lot like a deer. And you might be able to see that like right around here in the antlers, all the points are stacked up in the same plane. 
which looks way more like a deer's antlers than a moose's. So you can check out in my test fold, I actually went ahead and practiced what I could do to turn the antlers from looking like a deer into a moose. Um, and, you know, moose, I, I had to look and research moose skeletons, moose antlers, the difference between moose and deer, as well as just some examples of different species of moose. Uh, moose are really big animals. <laughs> and so, yeah, the antlers are really wide and kind of have, um, you know, a, a big surface area in the middle before it splits into points. Um, and so that's what I tried to note, uh, change in my folds as well as the nose being much more round. So you can tell in this final fold here, there's a three dimensional nose as well as very wide antlers. And conveniently, I chose a paper color that matched the diagram color pretty well. This is a Lambali paper. Um, and the texture almost looks, I guess, like leather. Uh, and it folds pretty decently. It folds like Lochta paper. Very similar. So um, here's this model. And now this model, I actually didn't score as high as I thought I would. Um, so there are definitely areas where I could have improved, such as the position of this detail here. Could have Anatomically, it should be a little bit lower. As well as I could have spiced up the legs a little bit. I did research moose skeletons quite a lot to understand where the bones lie along the structure, but I think I wasn't quite able to render that out properly. Um, I Maybe I did a better job in the hind legs than the fore legs. Um, but one thing I really enjoyed that I did here was adding the hooves to the design, as well as making the layers on the top relatively clean through shaping. Now, I think the reason why I didn't score as high is because I wasn't able to show off all these details in the specific photos that I took. And so IOIO, to judge, you're supposed to submit three photos of different angles to try to capture, you know, what does it look like on all the sides? And this moose gave me some trouble in how I f f photographed it because I wanted to highlight my change in the antlers as well as the overall proportions and the structure. Uh, but I think I wasn't quite able to capture those details that would set me over the edge amongst some of the competition. But overall, this was a pretty fun model to fold, as well as, again, kind of being like a trick model, right? You're not supposed to go to the last step and be done. Um, as it's a folding competition, it's the responsibility of the participants to take what they're given and elevate it higher to make it a competitive folding piece. And I'm going to mention that actually with some of the future models. I think uh, I read that there were some critiques from people complaining that the diagrams either were kind of, you know, not the best or that some of the designs didn't quite look as people expect them to. But I think they've already lost that mentality that it's not the diagram or the design's purpose to fulfill some kind of image. It's the folder that is supposed to transform the design into a competitive piece. So yeah, if you have thought like maybe you didn't really like these designs, uh, you might've been missing that actual competitive piece, right? These are challenge pieces. These are challenge tasks for a folding competition. And I think it's quite strategic and knowing Andre, I think there was some strategy in there in some of these designs. But yeah, that's my piece on the moose. I think it turned out pretty cool. It's also very large, um, especially compared to my test fold with Washi Deluxe. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a really fun one. The Washi Deluxe one actually is a pretty decently folded model. I liked how I did the legs here, although this color change would not fly in a competitive sense. So hence, I used a single color Lambali paper. And this is the next task, and this is the diagrammed task that is worth the most amount of points. Uh, I think it was worth, maybe, let me double check really quick. Um, it could have been like 10 points maybe. Yeah, I think it was 10 points, but I actually got a silver medal 
on this design. So I got 11 and a half points out of 10. And if you're wondering where I'm finding this information, you can see the entire scorecard on the blog post um, on the origami forum for all the different tasks and all the different judges. So if you want to check out how it's scored very specifically, you can go check that out. I'll probably have the link in the description for that. But yeah, this is the squid, again, designed by Andrei Ermakov. And again, like I just mentioned, I think this was a design he threw into the mix specifically for the competition to kind of set out the folders who could fold and innovate on the design or figure out the tricks needed to um, render out this squid um, versus the ones who would expect the diagrams to take them all the way. Because as you can see from my test fold, this is quite a beast of a design, especially for a lot of regular origami papers. And when I mean beast, it's it's a thick, it's a thick design. It's 22.5 with a bunch of flaps, which if you folded that, you might know it gets relatively thick. And within the design sequence, obviously I can't spoil the diagrams or anything, but there are some very interesting sequences where you're pulling out layers, recollapsing them into points, um, you know, all that kind of sorts. The color changes are on the edges, of course. So, um, and for the, which I didn't actually even fold these, but for the tentacles, um, where it's supposed to color change, not all of them are even color changed. So there are a lot of challenges within this design that, <laughs> you know, are pretty tricky um, to someone who's folding it. They might be caught off guard where they expected everything to be color changed or things to fold, you know, in the most efficient or the best or the most comfortable way, but they really aren't. Um, you can really tell that my test fold here exploded open you know the paper is ruined and this is pretty large kami which is you know generally decent uh, for just folding a complex model all the way through especially a 22.5 designed model um, that was not the case but i personally really like this squid even though i did find some people who really did not like this squid um, i think my favorite part about this squid is the color change eyes um, they're a little bit different than, say, an anatomically correct squid, where obviously it's a round eyeball. Here it's more of a cartoon, like, angie squid, you know, angie eyeballs. And um, despite it being, like, a little bit more fierce, uh, to me it's really cute. <laughs> I really like that about this squid. You can tell that I tried to see what it would look like with rounded eyes, but I didn't like that as much as these angie eyes here. Now, what allowed me... To fold the squid like this. Um, not only was there some background knowledge on just folding in general, but I actually put in a ton of research on other people's folds of similar models to be able to get my squid like this. And let me explain. All right, so the research I put in to fold this squid. Now, some people would just refer to the shaped diagram of uh, the squid, which looks really, really cool. However, with these flaps, again, it's kind of like a trick. Um, the diagrams are not gonna get you close to this, and it's gonna be near impossible to find a dual colored paper that allows you to fold these thick flaps that thin. Um, you know, the reason why I didn't do it here is you, you can even see through some of these layers um, that, yeah, there, there's no way, especially color changing, right? The paper I used here is a mulberry backed with, um, I think, black tissue paper, which is pretty thin. I mean, this is Kami. It's even thinner, but it's nowhere thin enough to make it look like this. And to solve this problem, I actually looked at previous IOIO contestants folds of cuttlefish. In 2018, there is a cuttlefish design, not nearly as complex as this model. But, you know, it's got tentacles. It's very similar. There's a lot of layers between them. And I looked at the top folds, the people who won that task. And one of my favorites was from Carla Godoy, a fellow um, contestant, actually even this year, who placed in the top 10. I absolutely love Carla's folds, and especially the ones of her uh, 
cephalopods, <laughs> I guess. I, I think she even got first place for this squid design. Um, so looking at her cuttlefish um, gave me the inspiration on what to do with these tentacles here. As you can see, right, it might be hard to determine what am I supposed to do with these. And I actually did that cuttlefish in 2018 myself and massively failed, <laughs> I guess. Or maybe not failed, but I had no idea what to do with the tentacles. They were very static looking. They were just curled and spread out. Nothing special there. This one, on the other hand, I was like, oh, tentacles can overlap each other in an intentional way where when you photograph them, you can see all tentacles. However, they are not all spread out and random. They work cohesively together to mimic what maybe a real squid would kind of do. Um, and that is how I got this pattern, I guess, this uh, pose for the tentacles where at any angle, you can kind of see that there's a bunch of tentacles there. They're not overlapping each other too much. They're not too similar. Um, obviously, it wasn't enough to actually beat Carla in this challenge um, or to get a gold in this challenge. But looking at Carla's from the previous IOs definitely helped. And it wasn't just this task that I studied the previous IO, IO winners. Actually, for most of the tasks, in addition to doing a full test for the model, I also looked at as many IO, IO winning folds as I could to understand for myself why did these ones win? What makes them good? What makes the second place ones not as good as the first place ones? And did kind of a deep dive research on that, picking them in our brain, um, and that really helped me understand this challenge. And because this one was worth more points, getting that silver medal was very beneficial to me getting second place um, in IO, IO. So that is another tip I have for you. If you're considering uh, competing, look at what the other winners do, you know? Um, it it just kind of makes sense. If you want to win, look at, you know, what the previous winners have done and do that. Um, even if you're just folding in general, if you want to get better at folding, look at what makes a good fold good, what makes a, even what makes a bad fold bad is a good way to go as well. There's some research to add to your repertoire and your armory to, you know, kind of fold out a piece like this. And yeah, kind of going with that, I think um, that is, you know, overall an overarching, um, you know, thing I used for this competition was that research, inspiring myself, basically doing an origami review with myself for a ton of different models just to see what's good, what works, what doesn't work, and go from there. Uh, now this squid looks particularly good from say like this angle. Uh, and again, because it is kind of like a trick model where, you know, you really have to do justice outside of the diagram to make it work. You can notice that even the slightest details, the arch, the small curve from the back um, of the head to the front of the tentacles, all these things really play a part into maximizing my score here. Um, if you take a look at my Instagram post of this design, you can see all three angles I chose and just how well it helps this model work in getting judged. But yeah, quite a tricky model, quite a tricky model, especially even though it's diagrammed, quite a tricky model to make it look good. Not very hard to fold, but difficult to make it look good. Um, but that was quite a fun challenge to do. All right, and that wraps up this episode of Origami Review for IOIO 2021. Um, I hope I was able to explain you know, some of the techniques and allow you guys to learn all about my approach to this competition. Uh, competitive origami is really special where I feel people can grow themselves much faster than just folding regularly. Uh, because of the competitive aspect, it allows a lot of room to grow where there are points that need to grow. Um, I would normally not fold a lot of these types of models on my own uh, because you know I like to fold and design humanoid models. But by folding some of these models, by being, I guess, forced to fold these models and 
really spend time on them, it taught me a lot of different new shaping techniques that I could use, as well as study techniques and, you know, just how, how to make different subjects look good, a bunch of different stuff just to bolster my own folding skill. But yeah, this was four out of the 11 tasks. And I hope you guys can look forward to the future tasks because I really enjoyed pretty much every single challenge and there's definitely stories and techniques behind all of them. Uh, but yeah, look forward to those future videos. They're coming very soon for this, I guess, special edition IOIO. I want to thank once again, the entire IOIO committee, as well as my fellow uh, contestants and participants. Um, it was overall, very special competition. I am very thankful to have been given the placement of second place. And yeah, I'm just super excited to share all this with you guys. Um, this competition has also inspired me to start that OBB competition, which is gonna wrap up soon. So definitely keep your eye on that, as well as other future folding competitions for Oregon. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze. Now I'm